Howdy, and welcome to Family Friendly Foods with Chef Nancy and Coach Kirby. Hey, I'm glad to be back with you again. I guess. I need some more recipes in my in my recipe book. We got it going on, Coach. What we're doing today in this show, I'm going to show you three different things to do with winter squash. Mm, good. The first one we're using today is acorn squash, and we're going to stuff it with Hoppin' John. Mm. This is something you can do the day ahead of time, or it's also something you can do at the last minute. And so it would store well, too. Absolutely. Great. That's it, all yeah, about that. It's awesome. All about the leftovers. So, let's get started. What we're going to do is we're going to take the acorn squash and we're going to microwave it for one minute. What's that do? It's going to soften it enough that we're going to be able to cut it. I've always wondered how to cut these. Yeah, well, that's how you cut it. Or you can cut yourself, what, whatever. Then, no, we're going to make the Hoppin' John. And okay. the ingredients in the Hoppin' John are sausage, and I like to use the mild, I mean the medium, you can use hot, it depends on your family. And rice, black eyed peas, yes, I know some people don't like them, but coach, black eyed peas are yummy and it's very southern. And it's a very good form of protein. We'll Absolutely. talk about that later. And rice, another form of protein. A good carbohydrate combined together, a Absolutely. great meal. And we're going to put red bell pepper, celery, green onions, and a little dash of Worcestershire. Uh -huh. Or as my father Godfrey would say, whoa, Chester. Whoa, Chester sauce. <laughs> so let's get started, okay? Let's do it. All right, we're going to microwave this acorn squash, and we'll be right back. Okay, Coach, we've microwaved this for one minute. All right. And it'll make it easier to cut. So it's a little bit warm still. Right. What, does that mean it's softer? Yes, it does. And you can microwave them all the way, but that's not what we're doing. No, no. no. We're, we're going to make it young. Way. Right. All right, so I'm going to cut it in half through the core. And so it's really easier to cut that way. This is Eureka all these years. I haven't done I know. I hate cutting these things. And then we're going to take the seeds out. And it's very important to get the seeds out. You can give me the seeds. I'm your lovely assistant. Well, I'm going to put them right here. All right. And with any winter squash, you want to make sure you get the seeds out of it. And these bigger seeds, you can roast like pumpkin seeds. All right. So the, and we're going to end up filling this acorn uh, squash with the uh, good Hoppin' John. Got it. And this will be a dinner that you could serve with a salad. Mm. or whatever, but you can roast these just like you can, um, like I said, a pumpkin because, because pumpkin's part of the squash family. Well, yes, and squash, yellow, yellow uh, fruit, would we call this a fruit because there's seeds inside? Yeah. Wait, let's talk about what you're doing right now. All right, what we're going to do is I'm putting a little bit of canola oil, I don't want to flavor it, in and the inside and around the outside. And that will do what? Well, it's going to help it not stick, but it's also going to help my seasoning stick. Oh. I'm going to put a little bit of salt on the outside and the inside. You always want to flavor every level. You don't want to just throw it in, Coach. All right. We want flavor. So now we're putting some pepper on? Always put little pepper. 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 All right. Now, what you do, you cut it in half mm -hmm. after you microwave it for one minute. Then, scrape the seeds out. If you're doing savory, which is what we're doing, you're going to salt and pepper, oil, salt, and pepper, and then you put it cut side down, and it's ready for the oven. Now, wait, before you go someplace, for the people who are like me, what is this paper? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Coach. <laughs> you're welcome. This is parchment paper, and if I put this down... I don't have to clean up so much. Uh-huh. I, I like it. It is not wax paper. It's parchment paper. Okay, now back to what you were doing. Sorry. All right, so I'm going to put this in the oven at 375, and I'm going to check it in about 30 minutes. When it starts feeling a little soft. Not yet. 
<laughs> I'm going to take it out of the oven, turn it over to let it start cooling. And again, you can do all this a day ahead of time. Great. So I'm going to stick this in our oven. Now, now, are you ready, Freddie? I think I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. We are going to make our Hoppin' John. All right, well, you start. I'm going to go toss this out. You got it, sister. <laughs> We've got red bell pepper I diced, green onions, okay. and uh, celery. Now, here's a scoop. Your and black eyed peas, which I drained size. and rinsed. What did you do? I, I drained it and then I rinsed it very, very thoroughly to get rid of any sugar that's on here, right? And, and salt. And salt. And you said gas. Gas. When the foam goes away, the gas goes away. Okay. Okay, so. now, the size of these is what I tried to cut all this stuff Interesting. At. Reason being, everything will cook the same, but it'll all fit. Oh, look what I've got. Well, no. It'll all fit on the spoon. And I'll put this one on here, too. Yeah. Isn't that clever? I and it'll all fit on the spoon, and it all looks pretty, and it's not just about flavor. It's about eye appeal. I agree. Now, what we're going to do first is I'm going to take... My sausage, my medium, and you can use hot if your family likes spicy stuff. But you like medium for this recipe. Well, when I cook for kids, I never use spicy. Oh, that's good. And idea. since most families have kids, I'm going to put this in the pan. All right. And I'm going to turn it on. Thank you, madam. Yes. I'm going to turn it on. Now, you're using a rubber spatula. Is that okay? It's a high temp spatula. Okay. This spatula will go up to 550 degrees. Hmm, I guess you have to make sure that you've got the high temp spatula. Uh, yes. And what we're going to do, we're going to cut this up. And as it fries, we're going to keep mashing it down. Now, I'm not using a potato masher or anything to do this. I don't want to run the meat. And, plus the fact, it'll run this pan. This is a non-stick pan, and you should never, ever use metal in a non-stick pan. That's a good point. You want to use stuff that's for high temperature. Now, we're going to let this you're start flopping, cooking. You're flopping meat all over the place here. Oh, gross. And we don't have a dog. Well, you don't want your dog to eat raw meat. So, while we're washing our hands, I've already cut up all my stuff. I'm going to get it all together, and we're going to make some Hoppin' John. Now, the sausage is almost cooked all the way, so I'm going to add my other mise en place, which are my bell peppers, my celery, and my green onions. Voila! So here's the voilà. green onions. Here are the green onions. How much? About a whole bunch? It's a bunch? whole bunch of green onions that I diced the white and the yellow. Okay. We have two small diced celery. Just some stalks, two stalks. Right, and we have one large red bell pepper. Adding more color and more vitamins to that dish. I love it. That's right. Remember, eat your colors every day, and when you do, you get all the nutrition you need. Now, I'm going to let this saute for just a minute, and you don't need to worry about if this meat's cooked all the way because it's going to keep cooking. And you don't want it to taste like little dried out horrible stuff. No, no one likes little dried out horrible <laughs> no, stuff. No, they don't. Now, oh. I'm going to add my Worcestershire and about a tablespoon. And I hate it when I miss this. When because, you forget to put it in? Yeah, I really do, because it really makes a difference. And it adds salt and all kinds of stuff. And you'll notice I'm not salting this because there's salt in the um, sausage and there's also salt in the broth. All right. So that's now, good to know what's in your ingredients. If so you use a can of broth. Ooh, don't cut yourself there. I'm not. It's whoever opened this didn't get it open all the way. <laughs> now. Rice is always two to one, so if you grab me the rice I will do that. Two to one, two to one. Rice is two to one. Right, so I got one liquid, yes. and I'm going to add a half a can for rice. So, you want me to do that? Well, maybe the person that cut this didn't cut it right. Well, I don't know who did that. I don't either. So, you, but that's so I got a half a cup of rice, okay. 
And I'm going to pour that in. I'm going to make sure I get it all in. Because we had one can of broth, and so we would half half that out. All right. Yeah. Two now, one, if you've one, got um, the big box, go on and use two cups and use a whole cup of rice. And if I sneak, uh, just switch across to here, because this is an instant rice. This is cooked regular cook long. Could I use brown rice in here if I wanted to up the um, nutritional Yeah. Value? It'll take you a little bit longer okay. to cook it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add the black-eyed peas. Let me get those for you. Yes, madam. Okay, Coach is doing black it to Black-eyed peas. It. Here comes some more protein added to the uh, sausage. And Give me those glasses. Those well, up. we're going to take those off the stove here in just a All minute. Right. I want to stir this up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it. In about 10 minutes, I'm going to stir it up, okay? All right. And then... I'm going to fill my acorn squash and put it back in the oven to warm up. Now, there you go. Perfect. Now you want the top? We're going to put the top on it, that lovely top. Well, any top will do, right? Right. Okay. We're going to let that go, and we'll be back in 20 minutes. All right. Let's go do some okay. good. All right. Coach. Yes. I think it's time for the Hoppin' John. So the insides. Right. <laughs> what we did is after 10 minutes, we took the lid off and stirred it up, okay. covered it again. Once the liquid is absorbed, the rice is cooked. And how long have the acorn squash been, been baking? They baked for about 30 minutes. They're not okay. very big. Now, here's the deal. Again, you can do all this a day ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And then build it the next day, meaning put the stuff in it the next Sounds day. Sounds great. Mike, the okay. recipe. Yeah. Right, so let's see what this looks like. Now I'm going to turn the oven off. Cooking for what, 20 minutes? Yeah. Put it right here. and You're I can just trying to cook the rice. And it's, as you said, Voila. not Look instant rice. Beautiful. Yes, yeah, not instant rice. And again, it all look what we're cooked. using in the pan. We're not scraping the pan. Using a nice, is that a rubber? Yeah, it's a non-stick high temperature spoon. And then you just fill it up. So um. Hoppin' John, where did, that, where did that name come from? Well, it's a southern dish that story tells came from the Caribbean through the slave trade. You know, in Africa, they don't have a lot of meat. So they eat a lot of beans and rice. Mm -hmm. Well, they used meat as a condiment. And when they came to the Caribbean, they found the pig. And with the pig, they discovered all kinds of stuff. And one of them was sausage. They made sausage with it. So what I like about this recipe is we have lots of vitamins and minerals in the acorn squash. We have um, the, bel the bell pepper, which is really high in, in C and I believe in A. And it also helps with your heart. Yes. Then we've got our beans, our black-eyed peas, actually, which are beans, which are a great protein. Right. Our pork is a protein. You have your rice, which is a carbohydrate, which gives you energy and fuel but for the day. But also it has protein in it. And beans and rice together make a complete protein. And we have also we have green. flavor. We have so the onions. Well, and they're green and white. Mm -hmm. And white helps your immune system. And green helps purify your blood. Look at all this stuff that's going on oh here. These God. little acorn squash. Yeah. What's I next? Mean, you put it so back we're going to put it in the oven. What I usually like to do is cover it with some wrap, especially if you're doing this a day ahead of time. All right. I'll move this back over here. And we're going to put it in the oven. And What's we're going to heat it 350 or 375. All right. For about 15 minutes, you want the inside to reach 165 degrees if you have a thermometer. Otherwise, you just want it really hot. All right. That sounds like what I need to do. Just know that it's really hot. Yes. In it goes. In it goes. And our taste tester, Isaac, is going to be here in a minute. All right. We have been joined by Mr. Isaac, Hi, who Isaac. is Hi. our food taster. Coach. Yes. Isaac knows all there is to know about food. Well, you know you like it, right? Yeah, and that's you like, it. You, it's to me like you like food that's good for you, too, which I really like. Perfect. perfect. Yeah, perfect. perfect, right. Well, I can't wait to try this. All right, so we're try. all going to try it. 
It's Hoppin' John in butter and acorn squash. Mmm. 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 Mm. Mm. I like it. It's a mm. thumbs up. What do you think, bud? You like it? Should people that are watching this make this at home for their kids? Mm -hmm. Yes? Well, he's chewing up food. I know. He's not so, what do you think, Mr. Isaac? You think they should make this at home? Talk to the... Is it kid approved? It's making me crazy. It's making, it's you, making crazy. you crazy? It's so good? I feel crazy, too. That's fantastic. <laughs> All right. This is pretty yummy, isn't it? It's in my tummy. Mm -hmm. Thanks, okay. Chef Nancy. This is a great recipe. It's yummy in my tummy. Yes, it is. It's yummy in my tummy. Yes, it is. It's yummy in my tummy. Now my tummy has some yummy. It's <laughs> yummy in my tummy. Yes, it is. All right. All right. And I'm recipe. excited about this because I love spaghetti squash, but I'm never sure what to do with it. You know, spaghetti squash is one of the squashes that people are afraid of. You're correct. Mm. And it's so yummy and it's fun. It is. It has a little texture. Well, I think it's, I use it instead of uh, noodles sometimes. Well, but people have to know it's going to be a little different texture in their mouth, but yeah. it is so good. And it's good for you. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. Now... What I've done, which I always do, is I have microwaved this mm -hmm. for one minute. To make it softer, so we can right. cut into it. And I'm going to cut this end off, because that's what's always hard. All right. I cut that off. Now, you ready, Freddie? I am, because I've, I've, I'm always fascinated by how you cut these things. But just knowing that one minute in the microwave makes it a bit easier. Oh, makes it I'm sure a, a whole sharp lot knife easier. is helpful, too. Yeah. Okay. What made you think that? Well, I don't have any. <laughs> you know, if you don't have a short, sharp knife, for something like this, it doesn't work. But when you don't have a sharp knife, what helps is to saw with your knife. Like mm, if you're cutting celery or carrots. Yeah. Well, and it doesn't bruise what you're doing. And now since you've heated this up, to get the seeds all out, is it going to be easier as well? Um, no, because it doesn't really cook the inside. I see. But what's hard is when you have small hands like ours, Coach, mm -hmm. is to hold it. Oh. But. Well, maybe t four small hands are better than just two. Well, whatever. You're going to get all the seeds out. And all the stringy stuff, too? Well, yeah, there's some stringy stuff that's not part of the spaghetti. And does that have a name? You would know. Stringy stuff. Uh-huh. Well, it's tough. Sniglets. Yeah. Exactly. It is very technical. And that uh, works. And we're going to take it out of that one, too. Okay. But what we're going to do right now, because I'm going to end up tossing this in pesto, and I'm making the pesto with olive oil. Yes. I'm going to put olive oil on this. Okay. And instead again, of using canola oil. And this is helpful, again, because... It won't stick to the pan. And are we going to be putting some kind of salt and things on that, too, to make it stick to that? Absolutely. It's a great trick I didn't know before. We began See, and it gets segment. on the inside... And it begins on the outside. Salt and pepper on yes. the spaghetti squash. Now, here's the scoop. Yes. I've got these other ingredients here. Because after I bake the spaghetti squash, and again, I'm going to turn it upside down. Okay. And bake it in the oven. Parchment paper on the pan? On the pan. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cheater pesto. All right, and this stuff's great. I'm going to use spinach, dried basil, and olive oil, a little salt and pepper, and garlic. Because there's garlic. no such thing as too much garlic. Okay, I agree. Then when I cook it, I'm going to cook it in this pesto coach, and then I'm going to add some cherry tomatoes and a cut up green onion. It sounds fantastic. Oh, it's yummy, and if you want to put black olives in it, you can. It's kind of one of those, I'm giving you the basics. And then you take it from there, okay? You're giving us the bones. I'm we giving you the bones. however we like it. Right. Okay. All right, All right let's do it. Let's get on with it. I'm going right. to clean this and get it in the oven. Oh. 
Okay, we've got our spaghetti squash in the oven. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our pesto. I'm it's looking sort of forward a, to this. Like a fake kind of pesto. Who cares? If All it's right. Chef Nancy's pesto, I'm sure it's good. It's yummy. Lots All of right. garlic. All right, we're gonna use just one clove right now. Okay. Um, you can use more. Smash it. Peel, and peel it. it. Smash and peel. Put into her this in. Little teeny tiny food processor. processor. And All we're right. gonna put a little bit of salt on it now. And why are we doing it right now? Because it'll help it grind up. I've learned that there's a process that you go through and it always has a meaning. Right, it does. And I want this stuff to make sure it's not... Sometimes I use bigger salt and bigger pepper grinds. Okay. So I always put them in the bottom for that reason. Now, I've got that in there. So salt, I, pepper, and garlic. And I'm adding a cup of baby spinach leaves. All right. And I've washed them, and that's all I've done to them. And put them and right in with a little stalk and all, right? Yeah. No big deal. Well, these are the baby ones, so those aren't like big, ugly stalks. No. Then we're going to use about two teaspoons mm -hmm. of dried basil leaves. Now, let me explain something. Please if you do. had your dried herbs for more than six months, yes. they don't have a lot of flavor, so you may need more. It depends on how fresh they are. Mm. <laughs> so, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So that's why they've started selling these little ones. And I can tell because there's actually a date on it, isn't there? Yes. Okay. All right. So these are fairly fresh, so I probably only need two tablespoons, two teaspoons. Okay. I don't like to measure. I just know how many shapes. And I trust her. Well, she better. It always turns out just right. Sorry. Hey, move your arm. Hey, hey, hey. All right, What's so that? then I'm going to have you yes. put in a quarter cup of olive oil. I can do that, and I know to leave my cup on a so flat, uh, surface. flat surface and a quarter cup. Now, this may seem a little oily, but you're going to saute something in. Pour it right in? Yeah, pour it in. Thank you. Then we're going to put our lid on it. It goes, there you go. Now, we're going to go... Or, yeah. Now, all you're trying to do is do a paste. We've got one leaf of spinach that's not cooperating. Voila! It's done. And kids, don't use this at home. This is a very, very sharp blade, and Chef Nancy just put her hand down in it. No, 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 no. 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 That was bad. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Now, we're going to use a rubber spatula to get that out when we're ready. Okay? okay so we leave it? Leave it for right now. Oh, then what I've got... It smells so good. Doesn't that smell it good? great. Yes, yes, It yes. almost smells like... Well, you can smell the garlic, you can smell the basil, but that spinach gives it... I don't know... Je ne sais quoi. Uh, yeah, there you go. Now, I'm going to cut one green onion for garnish, and I cut... These are those pear tomatoes, mm -hmm. and they're a little larger. I cut eight of them in half. And what I'm going to do is just cut this up, and you can use as many as you want in this. When you go to make it, I've even done artichoke hearts in it, black mm. olives. You know, really, you can do whatever you want. Capers. Good you can ideas. even, you can like even put some pine nuts. Yeah, oh, pine nuts are really good in it. Um, now, I've got that cut. I've got this cut. What I don't have cut, if you're ready for this. What? I don't the know. The spaghetti squash. Oh, right. Well, I think we're ready for that. I do, too. How I'm long has go it been in there? It. It's been in there about 45 minutes. Okay. All right. Then I let it sit out for a while because it's so hot, you can't hold it. All right. Well, time so, flies when you're having fun. I'm going to go get from it. Chef Nancy. I'm going to go get it. Okay, here we are with our cooked spaghetti squash. Mm -hmm. Now, I always recommend, Coach, to do it ahead of time, even if it's just an hour ahead of time, because it's so hot to hold. Right, so we've let it right. cool down a bit. And it's a little greasy from the oil, mm -hmm. and it'll just slip right out of your hand. It's a bad combination. Right. So, I want to show you how to do this. All you do is take the fork, and you just go down the middle, 
and you have your spaghetti squash. I can do that, and it does look like spaghetti, thus the name. Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? And is the black stuff I'm seeing on here, is that pepper? That's the pepper and the salt that we cooked it in, which really does help make a huge difference in the flavor. Again, you want to flavor every level. If you don't, you're not going to have the flavor. And you know, there's a lot of, what would you call this, the meat? Yes. There's a lot coming out of this. I know. That's why I didn't even use a big, big one. I think that's, that squash are a very economical food to cook with. Oh, absolutely. All right, then here we got that one done. I'll All keep right. going here. You keep going. Now, we've made our pesto, and I salt and peppered that. So I'm not going to salt and pepper this until I taste it at the end, okay? Okay, well, Because you don't want to over salt and pepper something. I think I've got it out. All right, now, here's the deal with this. You cooked it, we cooked it until it got soft. But one of the things I want you to know about this is you can even make a cold salad out mm -hmm. of this. Put a balsamic vinaigrette on it and add even the same ingredients. It's so yummy. It's so a this cold is going to be a warm, a warm, warm dish. dish. Okay, all right. I didn't realize that. And this we'll will be a side dish. Yeah. Right. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pesto here. And if I don't have a tiny little, uh, you can do it in a blender. Okay. Tiny little Cuisinart food processor. I love that thing. I use it every day. You told me that when we did have some recipes before. Yeah, I, I use it for vinaigrettes and everything. Where are you off to? I'm off to the stove. Okay. And I'm going to put this on, not real high, medium. And I'm going to put some of this in, but not all of it. I just want it to cover the bottom. Shall I show the show our viewers how much that is? Yeah. Now That's we can always add more. Okay. All right. So what's the goal here? The goal is to, just like you put oil in the bottom, that's why I made this a little ah. oily. We want to put that in the bottom, so our yummy, oh, we got our fork stuck in there, our yummy, 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 that I'm going to taste, spaghetti squash. What are you tasting for? It's got that little bit of crunch. It's got that real mild, fun, sort of a citrusy flavor. Oh gosh, I love this stuff. <laughs> All right, now, this is warm, so I'm gonna put my spaghetti squash in it, and then I wanna just toss it till I heat it up. Okay. And you don't wanna put, like I said, too much pesto, and you can refrigerate that in a last a week. The pesto well? Yeah, and you can use it in so much stuff. You know? It was a simple way to make pesto. Well, it is. Now, it's not just like all the pestos. Now, I didn't put nuts in it because some people are allergic to nuts. But when I make this, if people aren't allergic to nuts, I like to add either pine nuts, walnuts, are very good in this. And if you still want that crunch of a nut and you're allergic, you can always use sunflower seeds. Mm. Now, we've got this. And we're just mixing it around till it's just all warm? Warm or? through. Okay, warm Now, through. what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get my cutting board here. Okay. And I'm gonna add my green onions and my cherry tomatoes, as you can see. Your lovely assistant will help you. There you go. Oh, thank you, madam. And you always use the back of your knife, okay. so you don't dull your knife. Nice not mix that anybody around. would ever dull a good knife. No, not that I would ever think no. of that. Now, look at this color. Let's show, let's show everybody the color. Isn't that nice? Look at that. Beautiful and green. again, you want to eat your colors. So we still haven't put all of the pesto in there, correct? We don't need it. Oh, okay. We're see, never we're, we're done with that. I see. And you never know. It depends. If you've got a big family, you're going to need all of it because you're going to do two spaghetti squashes. Mm -hmm. But you said this could be served warm or cold. Right. Um, I always add a little balsamic vinegar to it if I serve it cold. And again, with black olives, anything you want to add to it. I like with my recipes, Coach, for people to be able to take a basic recipe and make it their own. Right. 
and make this your own. That way, you like it. I don't know what your family likes to eat. They would like to eat that, I can tell you this. Oh, I'm sure, they always like this, but some people don't like olives, and some right, people right, don't right. like artichoke hearts. I might throw a little feta cheese on that. That is also good, but you know what we've got? What? I've got some Parmesan cheese. I'm Even getting better. ready to grate on it. Coach, uh, I've got Reggiano Parmigiano. Mm. I got a block of it at Value Market, and I've got my little zester grater here. Look how that's doing it oh, nice on that there. Oh, that's good. A little yeah. more, a little more. I love it. Well, we'll do more the color on it is so great too. when we go to serve it. Ah. So right now, are you just doing this so that it heats up with it? The yes. Rest of the fish. All right. And so you've got your red tomatoes in here. I love tomatoes, first of all, just because of the flavor, but also they're very, very heart healthy for you. They're good for your blood pressure and for your organ function, and they also help with your circulation. So tomatoes, not just pretty, they're really good for you, right. too. Well, and all the red stuff's that good for you. The red, the red peppers that we used in the Hoppin' John recipe, same kind of thing. But then you also have your, your um, I, I love sneaking healthy things into my yeah. recipes that my kids might not notice, and then they end up liking it. Um, but you've got all the spinach that's in here, along with the spaghetti squash. And yellow's good for all kinds of stuff, and so is green. Absolutely. So the green is great for, like, your kidneys and your, and your liver. And so it goes on and on. Makes you a healthy girlfriend. In all sorts of ways. There you go. All right. Let's get our taste tester. Isaac. Mr. Isaac. Okay, isn't yeah. that good? That's special cheese. Grated cheese. You want to try the whole thing together? I'm going to sneak over here and have a bite of yours. Mm. Oh, one. Mm -hmm. I've got the texture of the spaghetti squash. Mm -hmm. I've got the taste of the basil. What, what do, you, do you, think? you think? Is good. it good? Good. You're giving it a, a thumbs up? Are you sure? And it looks sounded like you said something else. Not, I, I, I like sure the my, onion. I want to make sure my it. kids will like this. What do you think? Will my kids like this? You can shake your head, yes or no. Yes. Good job again, Chef Nancy. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> I don't think there's a better taste tester than a three-year-old. I don't think so either. Okay. You just saw something simple and easy to do with spaghetti squash. You can even cook it a day ahead of time. You can heat it up, make a cold salad. Use spaghetti squash. I love winter squashes. And so does Isaac, so we're all in good shape here. We're in good shape. Okie dokie smoky. What do you think, boy? What do you think of it? Uh, well, he's doing a dance. I think he really likes it's it. a happy dance. Happy dance. Okay, we're ready. I think we're ready for another recipe. Right. It's time for butternut squash. Moose. Ooh, that sounds like a dessert it's to me. It's gonna be a dessert with sugar and spice and everything nice. Yay! One more bite. Oh, Yippee. coach. Okay, Coach, here we are with our butternut squash. What are we going to do with the butternut squash? It's not going to be savory. It's going to be a dessert. Really? Yes. I've never heard of a squash in a dessert, so this oh, will be exciting. This is... Oh, How do we do it? This is to die for. <laughs> All right, what we're going to do, I got oil, obviously, to rub on it, but mm -hmm. no salt and pepper this time. All right. Butter, because it's a dessert. Thank brown you. sugar. Heavy whipping cream, cinnamon, and I may add a little white sugar to the whipped cream when I whip it. Okay. And do we have some vanilla here too? Vanilla goes in the whipped cream and it also goes in our mousse. This is exciting. I, I want to see what you do oh, with and a butternut so squash. Oh, it's so yummy. Now look, I've already microwaved this for one minute. One minute so it's soft and it's easier to cut. And, and I'm going to cut this end off of it because the core. I'm going to finish cutting it in half. And I can't tell you how much easier it makes. It looks like I t I'm having a hard time. It's just that it's a little hard, but it's not as hard as it usually right. is. 
Well, I, I, this is going to change everything. I'm going to start cooking with a lot more squash because of these recipes, but also because of these tricks you're showing us. Beautiful. Beautiful. So and then, again, these are large seeds if you want to roast them like pumpkin seeds. And again, pumpkin is part of the squash family. When you roast, roast these, while you're scooping this out, when you roast these seeds, how do you do that? All right, what I do is I get, try to get all the strings off of them. Mm -hmm and just get the seeds like this. Right. And I start out with just putting them on a sheet pan on some parchment paper. Yep. And I dry them out in the oven. It use, you know, real low, like 200, you know, for about a half an hour or so. And then you can do them sweet or savory. When I do them savory, I mash up garlic. Ah and put a little oil in the skillet with the garlic and some red pepper flakes mm. and saute them with that. Or I'll do it with butter and a little cinnamon, sugar. And that's after you've already dried these out? After you've dried them out, do them in a saute pan real quick. And then do you put them back in and, and cook them again? No, they're ah, done. Wow, all right, thank you for that tip. So what's next here? What's next is I've cut it in half I'm just going to use oil. I've got the seeds out, and I'm just going to use a little bit of oil on it. And canola oil because it doesn't have any flavor? No flavor at all. Not like the other one where I used um, olive oil, and I wanted that flavor in the spaghetti squash. But this, like the acorn squash, I'm just using canola oil. I'm going to turn it upside down on a sheet pan with parchment paper. I'm gonna pop it in a 375 degree oven and check it in a half an hour and it'll probably be ready in 45 minutes. And in the meantime, we're going to make? We're gonna make heavy whipping cream to get it ready to make our mousse. Right. Okay? Let's get it. Ready to rock and roll. Okay, we're getting ready to make our whipped cream for our mousse. Now, which will go into a butternut squash. That's right. Now, let me let me explain something. Okay. This is heavy whipping cream. Yes. Yes, I know it has calories in it. But if you're going to make a dessert for crying out loud, make it right. <laughs> make a dessert. All right. Now, I have been known I think that's a uh, focus towards me. It is. <laughs> One thing you never want to use, Coach, oh, yes. is Cool Whip. And that is because? Because Cool Whip is nothing but like shortening an oil whipped together to get air in it. And then they add the powdered sugar and the vanilla and all that. If you want to eat shortening, fine. No, I don't. So this it, It's a trans fat, yep. and you know what that does to you. It clogs up your arteries. So this is a much better option. It is and a I'm better sure it's option. And tastier too. Oh well, yeah. And then we—I'm glad to see we have Paul Bunyan's measuring cup here tonight. Yes, I think this is fun. Now I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla to it before I get started. I'm going to add about a capful, which is about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. I bet almost everybody does their measuring out of the caps of their. Vanilla. They do. And this is pure vanilla extract. It is not imitation. There is such, can you smell that? I can smell it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right now. Yeah. You Big can't difference. smell the artificial. All right, now. Here we go. Ooh. Now, you love this, well, you love this mixer. This yeah, this is a um, immersion blender that has other attachments. And I'm not gonna whip this by hand. Well, no. And why, why whip it by hand when you can have this fun of it splattering all over the kitchen like this? What are you saying? <laughs> I'm saying you're cleaning you're up. Saying, you're saying you have on a blue sweater with white on it? That's all right. I can whip it off. Hmm. All right. Now, as this is blending, I'd like you, you to sugar. add about a fourth of a cup of regular sugar. A fourth of a cup. Thank you. You're welcome. And yes, I use granulated sugar. Works fine. Maybe next time we should lay down uh, some garbage bags well, or something before we start. Well, normally this, oh, hello. What? What's happening? Oh, we're in a, too high of a setting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, 
good. Joys of television. I know. Well, there you go. Well, we're going to whisk this for a while. Would you like me to do that while you do something else? Well, if you would do this. Yes, I'm going to come around to your side. And just press that button right there. This one? Okay. And I am going to get our butternut squash, which has cooled. It's got to cool before we use it. I think the whipped cream's just about done. All right, here's how I like to do really, really, really stiff peaks. Okay. Well, I can keep going. It's no problem. Well, the reason I do is make sure it lightens this. But if you do it too much, you make butter. Oh, so there's a happy medium here, which yeah. I'm going to count on you to tell me when we hit it. If it goes like this, and it's just coming off stringy like it doesn't even come off my finger. Right. That's what I want. Oh, darn, now I have to eat this. Mm. Oh, my gosh, that's so good. <laughs> it is good, isn't it? Can't wait to oh, taste this. Oh, that's naughty. Mm-hmm, mm. This is so much better than all that process. Yes. You know what? Yes. Now, what we're going to do, is, okay. since this is cool, we're going to get this out of there, and I'm going to let you do this, Coach. Ah, all right. I didn't know what to think. I thought we were going to fill our butternut squash up with whipped cream, which didn't really sound that good to me, but this is going to be better, I think. Oh, much better. All right. I'm going to try trying to move along here quickly because I know we have a lot to get to. There is that for you to scrape. I'm going to get rid of this. The smell of the butternut squash is just amazing. Is that enough? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, you scrape it down to the skin. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a half a stick of butter. Half a stick of butter. Which has been? Sat out at room temperature. Okay. Now, we're going to use about a teaspoon of cinnamon. Things are looking good. Oh, gosh. And again, this is the same way with the dried basil. Basil's an herb. This is a spice. Okay, so the same thing can only be around for six months? It can be around for ten years like yours. Like mine. But the point is with it, <laughs> <laughs> it can be around that long, but you don't want it to be around that long because it doesn't have any flavor. Well, that's true. I'm, I think I went home after our last... Our last go around with these recipes and threw out a lot. Well, that was good. Because I and I did realize they had been moving with me for the last 20 years across the country. So, but I hadn't realized that, that doesn't sound very good. No, but I didn't realize that spices also. Uh, now like you want similar. about three fourths of a cup of brown sugar. Okay. Oh, I'll just use it all. Just use it all. But sweet, sweet's good. I'm gonna reach behind you. We're here. using that was almost a cup. I had measured out a cup. So that's basically what that was. Now, what I'm trying to do is mash all this. Do you want me to mash that? If I had a potato masher, that's what I would use. Well, you have you a Kirby's arm. You could also put it in a blender with the uh, paddle attachment. No. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of whipped cream. Okay. And now, this was a pint. I'm going to add a little bit, oh, and I'm going to fold it in. This. Because I don't want the air to go out. What are we calling this again? It's a butternut squash mousse. Whoa. Do we have to wait for it to be in the refrigerator or anything, do we? Can we just eat it? Soon? I can't wait. No, I'm not <laughs> waiting either. That's why we... This now, looks so good. Now, let me get the rest of this out. Okay. Oh, this is so naughty. I can't tell you how naughty it is. Now, if you don't want to use cinnamon and you want to use pumpkin pie spice mm -hmm. or apple pie spice, you can. I just like using the cinnamon. But sometimes this year you buy pumpkin pie spice yeah. for pumpkin cake. I had some of that at home. Yeah. Probably about well, 11 I, years old. Well, you can use it all year long. Oh, look at this. Okay. Here we go with our mousse. And see, have you ever eaten a mousse before? No, I, haven't. <laughs> I hope not. All right, we put it in these pretty glasses so they'd be fancy, okay? And you know what we call some desserts a mousse, but it's it's not a re it's not a mousse with antlers. Okay, why don't you, you ready? give it a try? Let's take a bite. 
Mmm. Pretty good? What do you think? Mm. What do you think? Yeah? Mm hmm. Mm. Thumbs up, Nancy. Thumbs up? You've done it again. Would you get your daddy to make it? It's perfect. And delicious. It's delicious. Perfect Good. and delicious. There you go. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. I don't mind if I do. We're going to have cheers. Cheers.